In the 2017-2018 NBA season, Twitter drama was never far away. The season kicked off with Kevin Durant getting caught using burner accounts and later Steve Kerr accidentally tweeting something meant for a DM. But these moments will all pale in comparison to what will happen by season end. I promise you that this is a story that's even more bizarre than you remember. A story that you have to see to believe. To begin, we must go all the way back to 2015. The date is December 1st, 2015. The Philadelphia 76ers are playing the Lakers, and they're currently coming off an NBA record of 28 straight losses. But this actually isn't bad. This was all by design. You see, the 76ers currently employ a man by the name of Sam Hinkie, their GM. Sam Hinkie was an outcast from the very beginning of his tenure, an analytics-driven mind who's worked with numbers all his life. When Hinkie was introduced as the Sixers GM in 2013, he made his intentions very clear. I start with an end in mind and everything. The mantra here has been very clear, which is to compete for championships. You see, Hinkie understood that the only thing that's worse than being bad in the NBA is being mediocre. Hinky came to the realization that for a team to be a true contender, you need a generational superstar. I think all the best teams have been built around um, great players, and we're going to be particularly focused on that. In Hinky's first ever draft lottery, there was this foreshadowing moment of what's about to come. Do you like this process? What's that? The lottery process. Ah! Uh and he wanted to give himself as many chances as possible to strike gold, which means losing as many games as possible, even if that means the most in NBA history. Now back to 2015. You see, Hinkie's plan at this point is kind of a mixed bag, but it did land them Joel Embiid, who is currently sitting out the season due to an injury. And unfortunately, on this night, their losing streak was snapped by the Los Angeles Lakers. In the celebration, say goodbye to 0-18. Say goodbye to a 28-game losing streak. Sixers, my friends, have won a basketball game. But the league is about to step in and do something unprecedented to force a change. Before we get back to this story, in 2015-2016 season, this was Kobe's farewell tour. I remember at the time trying to find different sites to go buy tickets, and ultimately I decided on SeatGeek, which is coincidentally today's sponsor. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including live concerts, sports, festivals, and more. And actually, I make it a point to go to a couple Laker games every year. And ever since 2016, I've been buying my tickets through SeatGeek. Football is in full swing, and basketball and hockey are back. Plus, artists like Post Malone are on tour. SeatGeek puts all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you are getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. And you know I came through for you guys. Use my code WOOHOOPS for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code WOOHOOPS. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Tanking wasn't a new concept. Many teams have done it before, but Hinky committed the ultimate sin. He said the quiet part out loud often referring to following the big picture of the process. They're doing this on purpose. They want okay, to stay up the it. joint so they can stop. That's the problem. Six days after the Lakers game on December 7th, the league said enough is enough. The 76ers announced the hiring of Jerry Colangelo as a special advisor. Sources telling ESPN.com that the move was lobbied by the league office after owners routinely complained about the economic drag the 76ers were inflicting on the league. After that season ended, on April 6th, Sam Hinkie was stepped down as the GM of the 76ers. Let him be some team's capologist, but he should never, ever, ever in this lifetime be a general manager again. Upon leaving, Hinkie turned in a 13-page manifesto as his resignation letter. Here's a quote that really sums up the piece. Abraham Lincoln said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. But not all Sixers fans were impressed, as this one fan could not even get past the first page. Shortly thereafter, Brian Colangelo, the son of Jerry Colangelo, was hired to be the new GM of the 76ers. And thank God that Philadelphia suddenly appears to be committed, Skip, yep. to at least trying. Colangelo, who was at the time most notable for being the GM that drafted Andrea Bargnani number one overall, and for these big callers. But all jokes aside, Colangelo was a pretty formidable GM, 
Through his career, Colangelo is a two-time executive of the year who did develop the reputation of someone who produced wins. Interesting enough, Colangelo might also be the first GM to openly admit to have tried tanking before while he was with the Raptors. But what's important to know here is that Brian Colangelo was probably walking into the most desirable situation in the NBA. They should thank God for what Sam Hankey left them with. Six additional first round picks, 50 million in cap space. Yes. This is especially important as there was one impending upcoming free agent that every team in the league had their eyes on. In Colangelo's first year as the GM, Ben Simmons would sit out the season due to injury, but he would gain Joel Embiid back. And from the very first game, Embiid looked like a certified yes, stud. Jumper. It's good! Joel Embiid does it again! The fans, of course, show their appreciation for what led them to this point. And they're chanting, trust the process, <laughs> in a nod to Sam Hinkie. Embiid being the result of Hinkie's process, nicknamed himself the process. But I used to get calls about like, can you please tell your one not to mention, you know, the process name. Like, we try to move on from it. And I was like, all right, watch, watch this. Colangelo was often criticized by the fan base on social media, but he also did have his own defenders as well, who I suppose grew tired of Hinky's process. The Sixers would make an 18 game improvement from the previous season, catapulting them from the worst team in the East to the second worst. During the NBA draft lottery, the Sixers would win the third pick overall, and Sixers fans showed their appreciation for Brian Colangelo by raising a banner for Sam fucking With Colangelo's sight being set on consensus number one pick Markel Fultz, he wanted certainty that the Sixers can get their guy. On June 19th, 2017, the Sixers would trade up for the number one overall pick from the Boston Celtics. Very excited about you know having the uh, certainty of number one. Though this was looked upon favorably at the time, in hindsight, it was likely that the Sixers actually got played by the Celtics. The Celtics would have taken Tatum number one. So Boston, to pull that trade off, has to number one, convince Philly there's a chance that they or the Lakers will take Fultz, and then fleece them to get this extra pick but despite hindsight bias, the Sixers are finally looking like a real team, finishing off the season winning 16 games in a row, clinching the third seed in the East. In the 2018 playoffs, the Sixers would make it to the second round before losing to the Boston Celtics. And the ball game is over, and Boston is headed to the Eastern Conference Finals. Even though their season was cut short, the Sixers are now ahead of schedule on their timeline. Not only that, but they're also in the prime position to land LeBron James, as James had allegedly began looking for private schools in Philadelphia, and was also flattered by this billboard in Cleveland. You can say it's a, nah, it's a distraction. No, it's not. Not a distraction, it's actually very flattering. In two seasons with the team, Colangelo has led the Sixers from the worst team in NBA history to looking like a contender for years to come. Plus 18 wins in his first season, then plus 24 in the following. I can assure you that's not gonna happen next year. We're not gonna beat 24 wins. Uh, we would be the best team of, of all time. But some amongst the Sixers fan base remained skeptical because while Colangelo was doing his exit interview, Jason Tatum, who the Sixers could have had, was going head to head with LeBron James in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Sixers were meanwhile stuck with Markel Fultz, who was suffering through some mysterious injuries all season long. But of course, Colangelo did have his own legion of defenders as well. Okay, hold up a second. I feel I've seen that account before. In this account. In this account. Wait a second. Aren't these all the same accounts from earlier? And why are some of these tweets so personal? In this one tweet where this guy is alleging that Brian Colangelo was holding back Markel Fultz, this Twitter account replies, Shame on you, you big fat liar. I hope your TV breaks tonight. Why are these the same accounts defending Brian Colangelo? As if that's all they're on the app to do. As if they're Brian Colangelo himself. In this other tweet where this guy jokes, This you, Brian? The account replies, No, but thanks for the compliment. He is too classy to even engage. Worked with him. He is a class act. And also there's this tweet where this guy is making fun of Brian Colangelo's love for big callers, and the account replies, 
that is a normal color, move on, find new slant. See, back in 2018, a Sam Hinkie fan on Twitter noticed this as well and decided to tip a journalist by the name of Ben Detrick. The story first came when I got a DM on Twitter and they said, I have a scoop. Would you be interested? And I said, yes. Told me he worked in artificial intelligence. He said, these guys are ruining the Sixers. Um, I think I've found these accounts, this evidence, and I think we should write a story on them. The tipsters specifically noticed that these five accounts all follow the same people and use the same language. And most of all, they serve the same purpose to defend the honor of Brian Colangelo. On May 22nd, Ben Detrick decided to take action, emailing the Sixers of his findings. Though Detrick had five accounts that he suspected, he only gave the Sixers two accounts, the outspoken Eric Jr. account and Philo 123456, an account that shared the same patterns as the others, but didn't have any posts. And then they came back to me and they're like, yeah, you know, it's, it's not Eric Jr. And then they were like, Philo 123456, yes, that is him. After that, Detrick waited and waited and waited. Finally, it happened. Yeah, I was just sitting there and I was refreshing him and, you know, every few minutes, and then I saw steel balling go down and it went to private. Then a few minutes later, I checked back and I saw Honest Abe go down and enough cone sources also. So within, a, I would say a 15 to 20 minute period, at least while I was watching, they went down. And that was the exact same time when Brian Colangelo was notified. And then when I asked the Sixers representative, if he had spoken to anyone else, he said no. This was the smoking gun. Detrick would release the article on May 29th, 2018. There is an explosive report this morning from a sports website called TheRinker.com. It claims the Sixers president. This summer is arguably the most important offseason in Sixers franchise history. LeBron James is a free agent. He's the best player on the planet and Philly is a possibility. But how can you haul in a king if your own kingdom is potentially in ruins? We called Nerland's Noel a selfish punk before trading him. Another account criticized Joel Embiid for dancing on stage at a Meek Mill concert while he was recovering from an injury. Embiid has been up all night responding to the reports. He took to Twitter to mock the idea of using a burner account and called Hinky better and smarter than Colangelo. This is crazy, but Colangelo, he rarely speaks to the media, and we were actually in Philly last month. Listen to this. We've got elite level talent, but we've got elite level character. It's a big part of what I do. Uh, I'm looking for something beyond just basketball skills. I'm looking for people that fit the culture of the organization. As game one was starting, um, Dan Gilbert sent out a number of tweets. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I don't. It was his account though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, the Sixers would begin an investigation into the matter. On June 7th, just like his predecessor, Brian Colangelo would resign from the Philadelphia Sixers. The Sixers president of basketball operations Brian Colangelo resigned yesterday after that whole debacle. The findings would conclude that it wasn't actually Colangelo on these burners, but his wife. That is throwing your own wife under the bus. The Sixers would conclude that even though it wasn't Colangelo operating these accounts, he was still responsible for these information getting out. Colangelo himself did not agree. Then he goes on about his wife. Her actions were a seriously misguided effort to publicly defend and support me. And while I recognize how inappropriate these actions were, she acted independently and without my knowledge or consent. Further, the content she shared was filled with inaccuracies and conjecture, which in no way represent my own views or opinions. So was it really Colangelo on the burners, or was it a wife who was defending her husband's honor? We will never know. To this day, Brian Colangelo still denies the fact that he had any knowledge of those burner accounts. The 76ers to this day have still not made it past the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs, which one may argue is being stuck in the mediocrity that Hinky feared so much. However, with the star power they now have, at least they won't be starting over from scratch. And for Hinky and Colangelo, I guess the only thing worse than saying the quiet part out loud is to pretend that you never said it at all. 
Thank you guys so much for watching the video. My name is Danny Wu. If you enjoy, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy this one, which is one of my personal favorites. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.